Hi, my name is Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I wanted to share with you something that I found out about uh, just over a month ago. And it came from reviewing and looking into more depth the paper by Alexander Parkamov from uh, February of this year. Uh, here's the paper, uh, Multeity of Nucleides Arising in the Process of Cold Nuclear Transmutations. Now, cold nuclear transmutations is the name that the Russian, uh, they call it cold nuclear transmutations and ball lightning. Uh, and so that's why it has cold nuclear transmutations and not low energy nuclear reactions. However, I was just looking through it and... Um, uh, the basis of the paper is he wanted to uh, explain some of the findings that had, he had seen in some of his experiments where there clearly was transmutations occurring. And that if you actually look at uh, what he's saying down here, you get all these uh, potential explanations for some of the observed transmutations. And he's even saying that uh, he was observing bismuth, lead, mercury, silver and lanthanides being produced um, as well as uh, other lighter elements. And one paper that he looked at, uh, which I uh, picked up on, uh, on uh, further reading of this, uh, was a paper by a guy called G.V. Mishinsky. And I'll just read you this paragraph because I think it's quite important. As was mentioned above, during the operation of nickel-hydrogen reactors, transmutations can occur not only in the fuel, but in the surrounding matter. Perhaps this is due to the fact that transmutations are not just process in the fuel, but in local formations, which uh, G.V. Mashinsky called capsules, uh, and the reference here I'm highlighting. Uh, in these capsules must fit at least two atoms. In condensed matter, the distance between neighbouring atoms is about 10 nanometers. Therefore, the diameter of the capsules is not less than 10 nanometers. They are electrically neutral, so they move freely in the substance. Now, that's very important there because this is something that we've observed by looking at the uh, strange radiation that's been coming out of uh, echo fuel. So it, it, it was able to move around within the fuel through plastic, uh, through air, through more plastic, affect that through more air, through uh, polymer tape, through more plastic and into a CCD and, and be picked up. And so this is something that can travel at a distance. And when you're saying electrically neutral, um, you know, uh, it reminds me of what um, uh, Kenneth Shoulders was saying, that he could get his Evos uh, out of white mode into uh, black mode uh, when they effectively express no charge. Uh, and therefore they can travel and carry their matter into other things and then they can maybe break up or be spun up again and uh, induce transmutations or, or damage in uh, some other things. So this is consistent with what we've observed a lot last year and in the early part of this year with an analyzing the Lion uh, reactor. Uh, and he says, they are able to leave the zone where they occur and permeating the substance cause transmutations in their path. They can go outside the reactor and, getting on photographic film or other detectors, cause, it, uh, cause in it the appearance of surprising tracks absolutely not similar to tracks from nuclear particles. So, um, uh, just before we go on to this, I just want to say that you know the, the data that came out of the uh, uh, work that Alexander Parkamov did last year, he, he was essentially saying, look, I can't go into many atoms being... Um, interacting but I'll just take two at a time and, and see two to one, one to two and and, and two to two. Uh, he shared that data and uh, a chap uh, called uh, Dennis uh, Lamont uh, produced this uh, on fuzzfizz.org uh, uh, which is able to do these reaction tables in a highly interactive fashion and another chap um, called Philip Power produced this one on thinktownreport.com uh, Com. There are links on our channel. Anyway, um, this allows an uh, iterative uh, cycle, so you, you can go down reaction chains. Anyway, to talk about this strange radiation, or these absolutely not similar to standard radiation tracks, I think uh, this is uh, all kinds of tracks that came out of the echo fuel. Uh, if I pan up a little, you can see here. Uh, so, so they describe on film, we've got some film shots at the top there. This is 
a polymer that's in contact with the fuel and you see these tracks this is polymer that's uh, uh, outside and with an air gap in between uh, and it has these periodic tracks and uh, these um, uh, dual spots with these uh, affected areas and, and so forth um, this is the actual fuel itself and if we uh, zoom into that you can see that there's tracks coming off these uh, so-called spheres uh, and here this was uh, outside of this polymer so the polymer air gap polymer and then uh, some masking sort of uh, electrical tape in the front of a Logitech 910C uh, and these are tracks that are captured on the, the CCD so these are a range of cat tracks from Echo Fuel, but the most surprising uh, track which shows that it's absolutely dissimilar. I mean, you've got the periodicity here and the zigzagging here and the zigzagging here. Um, but this track from the Lion Reactor outside, uh, so it's not in the core. This is uh, outside the alumina and in the uh, copper that was uh, transformed to Cu2O. Uh, you have these very, very odd tracks. Uh, which are absolutely dissimilar to uh, uh, what you might call standard radiation tracks. So, uh, looking at this paper here, the Mashinsky uh, paper, this is it. And uh, I will go into this uh, in much more detail because I have uh, taken the liberty to spend a considerable amount of time attempting to translate it uh, and uh, because it just didn't work or automatically so I had to go uh, bit by bit and, and go through it. It's a long paper but I think it's going to be very very valuable for people to study.